Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Chris Graham here with Scott German. And uh, we're talking moments after Virginia's thrilling 20-14 to win at North Carolina. A little too thrilling. Uh, the Cavs uh, dominate the stats, uh, but uh, the game comes down to the final minute. Scott, first impressions of that win? Had them all the way. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, I mean you know we're we're too we're our program was uh, the rebuilding of our program is way too too young too early on into the program to really not just be ecstatic with any kind of win. Yes, uh, I mean if you look at this game, sure, um, you know we got we got a lot to clean up. But before this season started, how much hope did we, did anyone have of Virginia being five and one after six games, and 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 talking about being disappointed somewhat because we didn't take care of business better and didn't didn't lay a lay a whipping on North Carolina? I mean, I just I just I've suffered through enough losing football to not to not want to just find all the positives about this and not really spend a lot of time dwelling on the negatives. Oh, there's nothing negative about a win on the road. And a North Carolina team 1-5 and five coming in, but don't worry, you know, the records don't mean anything. You know, this game felt like the kind of game, we've said this before, Scott, I think last week's game with Duke was an example of this too, that a, 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 a Virginia team last year, previous years, would have lost this game. You know, they lead 10 nothing at halftime. You dominate the stats. Carolina only has 75 yards offense uh, in the first half, but it's only 10 nothing. And then the Heels come out and score on their first two drives, all on the ground. Two big running plays uh, by Michael Carter. A 40, uh, a 57-yard run sets up a short one-yard touchdown by Carter to make it 10-7. Next drive, he gets the ball. First play, 47 yards off the left side, and just like that, you know, Virginia dominates this game. All the way through, it's, it feels like at that point, and you're losing 14 to 10. And you know, again, that's where a Virginia team, a young team, can often panic. But what Virginia does, they come out. Uh, the big play to Zacchaeus, 81-yard touchdown, a catch and a, a catch and run. Most of that was a run. It was a pass out in the flat on first down. He breaks a tackle at the uh, uh, UVA 24, streaks down the sidelines, 81 yards for the touchdown, 17-14. Heels get a big stop. Virginia had a third and one at the six-yard line uh, on the first play of the fourth quarter. A holding penalty breaks, uh, brings back a touchdown. Virginia ends up settling for a field goal, 20-14. to 14. Quick recap then. Virginia gets the ball back after a, uh, after a Carolina punt with 11.32 to go. Runs almost nine minutes off the clock, but then fumble. Kurt Binkert fumble on a third down play, and the Heels have the ball back at the 40-yard line. Couple first downs. They're in, they're in you know, plus territory. Fourth and nine, Chris Peace with a sack. Probably probably a benefit that uh, the, 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 what could have been easily a face mask call not called on that play on the fourth down play. And the Cavs hold on the win. But there were a lot of junctures there, Scott, where this Virginia team, a young team again, young and winning, could have, could have forwarded the 10 up. Uh, Carolina had all the momentum there for a while, even on that last drive. There was those first two first downs. You know, they got the ball in plus territory after a turnover. Virginia, uh, you know, soldiers up and does what it needs to do and so that's why it's an impressive win because it wasn't an easy win it was a tough win on the road facing a lot of adversity and, and we, we've said this over and over and, and, and it probably sounds like we're just tooting their own horns but hey we we are we deserve really should how how would you the old Virginia even if Virginia is, is as old as or as young as last year, um, they would not have won this game. Yeah, they would have lost. They would have. There was multiple times there. First of all, I think the two back-to-back -back scores by Carolina would have just crushed their um, their will right then. But you know, even that, there were some plays in the second half. Um, you know, you take confidence. You add a little bit of, of, of enthusiasm and, and belief in the new coach and the system. And those are the things that, that are winning football games for Virginia. There's no doubt in my mind this team would have lost that game last year. Un unequivocally. I mean, do you... 
drill the same way, or do you oh. think that we would have figured out a way to pull it out? Well, last year's team uh, wasn't competitive largely either. You know, we have to go back a couple years because Mike London's last two teams are, are a better comparison. You know, he went they, Virginia went five and seven in 2014, four and eight in 2015, but they you know had a lot of close games that they lost in the last you know last five minutes of the game, that kind of thing. You know, even the last time we played Carolina. Uh, it was actually 2014 playing Carolina in Charlottesville, a 28-27 loss. You know, that game Virginia led. There was even a similarity in, 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 in sense of, uh, you know, Virginia in that game uh, had a lead, had the ball for a long stretch of that fourth quarter, trying to drive, run clock out, a, a silly turnover. Carolina gets the ball back, scores quickly, then that onside kick that they recovered ran the clock out. You know, there, there was a similar feel to that 2014 game, uh, UVA, UNC, and Charlottesville as this game, uh, especially with Virginia getting that drive, you know, running so much of the clock off in the fourth quarter, and then fumbling, but then the, the difference was this time the defense bowed up. You know, last time the deep, you know, in that game, that was actually when Mitch Trubisky was a, was a backup player for North Carolina, came in and threw the touchdown pass that won the game. You know, that was a very similar situation with some some of the same players. Obviously, Micah Kaiser, Quinn Blanding were members of that team. Uh, they were young guys on that team. Now they're veterans on this team. And, uh, you know, they again, the defense faced adversity. They, Carolina takes over at the 40-yard line. Now they need to score a touchdown. But, you know, they have all the momentum after a turnover. The, 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 you know, certainly the, the feeling in the stadium is, is, is what it is. And uh, they get a couple first downs, get the ball down to about the 40-yard line of Virginia. And the Cavs do what they need to do. So, yeah, there's no question. I don't even want to say last year's team. Last year's team wasn't largely competitive in any of these games. But certainly compared to the last couple of years of the London era, when there was a lot of talent on the Virginia sideline, but it wasn't put in the right places and certainly didn't have the confidence to finish games out. You know, that was the question those last two years under London. Can they finish games out? This team, the last two weeks, has finished games out, and that's why they're five and one. Against two big rivals, one at home, this one down in Chapel Hill. Um, you know, I'm not even I'm not even that confident that that the Virginia team of 2017, after maybe a couple of games, yeah, still had that belief. Um, I think that that belief really started to to build. Um, during that Connecticut game, during that game that turned out to be a rout, it wasn't as close as the final score indicated. Uh, I don't want to say the light switch went on, but but it's on now. And you know, I was looking at the schedule <clears throat> schedule for the remainder of the season. Um, it doesn't take uh, much to figure out five and one after at the midway point. Uh, you win one of your last six games and you become bowl eligible, but all of a sudden, if Virginia only wins one of their last six games, it's going to be devastation time in Charlottesville. And that schedule, if you've kept up with what's going on in college football, is not all as imposing as it once seemed. Louisville loses at home today to Boston College. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, um, it's... They talked about the last three games, Louisville, Miami. Miami is in a dogfight right now in a, in a monsoon rainstorm with Georgia Tech in, in Miami, uh, losing. Um, so, you know, I, I just think that this team is playing with such confidence right now. The, the sky is the ceiling right, uh, for Virginia football. Yeah, we may, you know, after this one, you, you know, you never want to, you don't want to overlook any opponent. Next week, it's B.C., the team that just beat Louisville in Louisville, 45-42, with a lot of running. I got to watch a lot of that game. Didn't get to watch the end because our game started at 3.30. Uh, but Boston College put a whooping on Louisville on the line of scrimmage. So that's going to be a bruising game next week. You know, we'll preview that one later, uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, as we move into the next week. But, uh, you know, two teams that like to control the line of scrimmage, and Boston College ran wild today uh, at uh, Papa John Stadium in that upset win, 45-42. So that's going to be a heck of a game. But, you know, then you're at Pitt, which is struggling this year, to say the least. Then you finish up with four toughies, obviously Georgia Tech, Louisville, Miami, Virginia Tech. But like you said, Scott, you know, Louisville isn't as tough as they looked. You know, Miami is undefeated as, of we're, as we're talking right this second. Uh, but uh, Georgia Tech, you know, right there with them, Virginia Tech finishing up. You know, all of a sudden we turn from, okay, maybe we can win six and uh, go to a bowl to... 
huh, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, but this team might be playing for something more than just a, a chance at a minor bowl uh, when they play uh, at Miami in, uh, on November 18th and then at home on the Friday after Thanksgiving against Virginia Tech. There might be some, some bigger stakes for this team uh, if, things, you know, if, if this team continues to play the way it is right now. But you know, Coach Mendenhall, that's not it. The, the only thing that's going to be on that, that coach's staff's mind and then ultimately the players, they're going to be thinking about Boston College next week. And no question, yeah, yeah. Not that they needed to get UVA's attention, but they certainly did it today, beating Louisville in Louisville. Well, of course, they played Clemson really tough. The, the final score was 34-7 a couple weeks ago, but that game was 7-7 in the fourth quarter, so... Uh, and they played. I thought they played Tech well. They lost. They lost that game, and, and you know, Tech Tech sort of controlled the second half. But I thought they played. So yeah, no question. BC is on our radar. You know, enjoy this win tonight. Tomorrow we focus on BC. Um, and uh, you know, let's. I'll, I'll roll through some stats here. I've got the uh, the stat broadcast in front of me. Kurt Binker. I thought a solid game. 19 of 31 passing, 249. He did get sacked uh, four times today. That was the. This is the first time really. He, he'd only been sacked four times the last four weeks combined, but UNC got him a bit today, four sacks. He did throw for two touchdowns. Jordan Ellis had a huge game, 27 attempts, 136 yards, uh, and uh, he just seemed to move the pile every time he got in the line. And, and uh, El- what Ellis was able to do out there, Scott, he looked like some of the great UVA running backs of old. With, with When he was on the field, uh, he, was, he, was, he was the best player on the field for all those snaps. Chris, I don't have those stats in front of me, but um, you do. So tell me uh, quickly, first, what was the total yardage uh, on the day for North Carolina? 257, 211 on the ground. Brandon Harris, 7 of 18, passing 46 yards, 3 interceptions. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, the stats were skewed a lot. Michael Carter, 13 attempts for 157 yards, but 103 of those yards were on two carries, uh, those two bursts right. through the left side of the line. So you take those two long runs out of the, out of the equation, and you may not have any, any points, but you certainly have, the, have their offensive total, right? You, you slice that in half almost. Yeah. Um, and this Virginia defense did it, played, played an outstanding game today. Yeah, uh, Virginia had five tackles for loss, two sacks. Yeah, you take those yards out there, around 150 yards offense. Carolina only had 12 first downs, only had the ball for 20 minutes and two seconds. Uh, and, and Virginia, you know, dominated the time of possession. That's why it was so nail-butting. It, I mean, it was so hard for it to be nail-butting at the end. Virginia dominated the stats, 405 total yards for the Cavs to 257 for Carolina. Again, most of that on two big plays. Uh, Virginia, 23 first downs at 12 for Carolina, 39-58 time possession, 20-02 for Carolina. Carolina with three turnovers, Virginia just the one, the one at the end there, the, the Binkard fumble that, that gave Carolina the ball back for its one last chance. We actually saw A.J. Mejia hit a couple of short field goals. Uh, Virginia was, now one area that Virginia was deficient on, uh, they were 4 of 16 on third downs, but then 3 of 3 on fourth downs. Uh, Carolina 3 of 11 on third downs and 0 of 1 on fourth downs. That last play, uh, the sack by Chris Peace. Uh, so, yeah, defensively, once again, another stellar effort by this UVA defense, which is suddenly one of the better defenses in the ACC, if not the country. Playing with a lot of confidence. A lot, but, I mean, here we are. We're talking about, okay, we have, Virginia has things to clean up during this upcoming week to clean up, but but we're talking about cleaning up things after a win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and how many times over and over in the past have we just come away from a, from a game having lost a game and having so many opportunities to have won it uh, only to just do something silly, to, you know, penalty, a broken play, or, or uh, whatever. Uh, I mean, this is this is uncharted water for Virginia football for a long time. It is, and you know, I'll point out too. We talked on our our podcast earlier this week, the preview about the play calling. You talked, Scott, just a few minutes ago about how Virginia, you know, has this team is a different team that even played the first two weeks of this season. Uh, that the, the game against Indiana, Kurt Banker dropped back to pay through sixty six passes, got sacked a couple times. 
Uh, so he dropped back to pass 69 times that day. Virginia only ran 25. So a 69 to 25 ratio of, of pass to run. Today the ratio was 47 runs, 31 passes. And so now in the last four games, all Virginia wins. The Cavs have actually run the ball, uh, by my count, um, 13 times more than they've passed the total over those games. And so balanced offense... And successful offense, and of course the defense is off the field because the team is running so well. Ellis, again, the big, uh, the big career day, 136 yards on the ground. And so this is a football team now. There's a lot of razzle-dazzle, you know. There's, there's wide receiver jet sweeps and, you know, there's all, different things, different nuances, the way Virginia does things. Long handoffs. There was even one play. One of Ellis's uh, uh, big gains was on what looked like a pass, but it was behind, uh, Banker threw it backwards, so it was technically a long handoff, long lateral. Uh, but no matter how you draw it up, this is still a smash-mouth football team right now. When you run the ball 47 times uh, and win a football game, and then you hold the opponent to 257 total offense, that's a smash-mouth football team. And, and, you know, winning the old-fashioned way by out-physicaling out your opponent, that's, that's Virginia football in 2017. And that's, that's what... That's the, 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 the mindset of, of Coach Mendenhall. That's that's the blueprint right there. You win that battle at the line of scrimmage, and it just makes everything fall into place. It makes everything look kind of simple. And that offensive line, um, I'm not sure exactly how they grade them now, but uh, I remember years ago, years ago, I worked a couple of years for UVA, uh, uh, football up in the press box, and one of the jobs I uh, had was spotting the offensive line plays. And Coach Welch had a grading system uh, for players that that were beating their man off the line and were, were scrimmaging. The, and the, there was a magic number there that uh, I guess only Coach Welch or the, the offensive line coordinator had. And, and you wanted to get the offensive line cumulative score above 70. And most of the UVA teams were uh, under Welsh were in the set high 70s, low 80s consistently. I don't know how Mendenhall grades that offensive line, but you can't help but to think they're getting some solid marks because they are doing excellent work up, up front. I'll give some quick defensive stats. We talked about the total yardage for North Carolina. Quinn Blanding, 10 tackles. Uh, one quarterback hurry. Jordan Mack, nine tackles. Micah Kaiser, eight tackles. Uh, Chris Peace, uh, credited with six tackles, one and a half sacks. Uh, I thought a star, uh, uh, Andrew Brown had a big tackle for loss early in the game to snuff out a third down and short. Um, also, uh, uh, looking for the, is Bryce Hall. I'm looking for his stats here real quick. Bryce Hall had an interception and also two pass breakups on passes from Harris early in the game. Actually, one was in the first quarter. I think one was in the second quarter. Uh, that that could have been big plays for North Carolina, and he got in and, and great technique, block, uh, knocked those passes down. Uh, Chris Moore also had an interception and a tackle for loss. That's a nice uh, di dichotomy there. And uh, the other interception was Brenton Nelson, who also had a pass breakup. So your uh, your secondary numbers, your tackling numbers there, uh, the stars of the game for Virginia defensively, and. Uh, so, yeah, huge, and I didn't give any numbers for the receivers. Uh, Zacchaeus, 100 yards receiving, including that 81-yard touchdown run. Uh, Donnie Dowling had a nice game. You know, he, he's become, this, he's become a, a tough possession receiver. Five catches, 62 yards. Evan Butts had three, carry, or three catches, 33 yards, and that touchdown in the second quarter. Uh, Joe Reed, three catches, 26 yards. And so uh, there's your numbers for the day. Zacchaeus also had 13 yards rushing on those jet sweep plays. So, that's pretty much it in terms of stats, but wow, you know, what a, what a great team effort for this Virginia team. A 20-14 win for the Cavs, and, uh, and, and Boston College is on the radar. We'll, we'll, we won't think about Boston College. We'll, Scott and I will be able to look at some numbers, and when we do our podcast early in the week, we'll, uh, we'll be thinking UVA, UVA Boston College. But for now, we'll let this UNC win sink in. Well, Chris, let me ask you this. Dare we, uh, dare we even mention... Think about the R word. The R, the R word as in ranked. Oh, ranked. Well, you're five and one. Is this team going to crack the top twenty-five this week? Oh gosh, you know they're they're probably. I mean, they they got votes this past week. You know, you now you've won on the road. 
Uh, you're you're two and zero on the road uh, with wins at Boise State and UNC. Uh, I'm not sure if they crack it this week, but they'll probably be close if not. And you beat BC next week, and you're definitely if if you're not in this week, you're definitely in next week. So, but you very well could. You know that's it's 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 going to be. Yeah, I'll have to look at the top 25, see see who between 17 and 25 loses, and I, I think it's definitely a possibility. And if it's not uh, this week. Uh, it's it's definitely deserved. This team at five and one with a, you know with again those wins on the road. And UNC's one and six now, but uh, you know it's they're still UNC and still an ACC road game. And Boise State is is that that win still resonates for for a lot of people. So gosh, I don't know. I, it, it, if not, you're very close. If not, you're you're one of the last two or three others receiving votes before before the top twenty five. Well, I think you you hit it. The key there is. That Looking at the scores tonight, today, tonight, and those last, uh, those teams 20 through 25, if you have two or three of those go down, then it's a, it, it's a definite possibility that Virginia cracks that top five. And it, and it doesn't really mean a lot, but it's just something that fans can hold their head up and, and be proud about at this point in, in the development of Coach Mendenhall's program. Well, in one sense, it doesn't mean a lot. In another sense, it does. It's been a long time since this program has been ranked. I would say the 2011 season towards the end of that season after the win over Florida State probably uh, in November of that year. The, the next week they lost at home to Virginia Tech and fell back out of the top 25. Uh, so that's a long time. I mean, a lot's happened in the last six years uh, for Virginia. You know, and so, yeah, it, you know, it doesn't mean a lot in the sense of, you know, you still got to go out and play the football games. But for the fan base, I think for the players too. These guys were recruited. A lot of these guys, and certainly the guys who were are contributing uh, to the to the greatest extent, were guys recruited by Mike London when this program was way down. Uh, Mike London got fired. You know, last year's two and ten season. If they can, you know, if they can get in the top twenty-five, uh, whenever that may be this season, that it would be the reflection of their hard work and. You know, this program aspires, certainly just like other programs at UVA, the basketball program has been so solid the last several years. Uh, gosh, every you know, so many of the Olympic sports at UVA, the national championship in baseball a couple years ago. Uh, you know, so many so many programs at Virginia are, are national championship level. Uh, they're, they're top 20, you know, top 10, top 20 level programs. Uh, for this, for the football guys to be able to walk around grounds uh, and have turned this around as quickly as they have, you know, it's, it's just a number, but it, I think it could mean something, even though, again, you still got to go out and play more football, that kind of thing. It could be a nice, it'd be a nice feather in the cap for this program. I agree. It's not, it is not. just a number, and it's an opinion of some voters that often don't even see the games play, but uh, uh, considering how downtrodden the program has been the last five years or so, uh, it, it would be it would be pretty sweet to see us in that top 25. It would be, it would be. So that's that's the uh, that's what we're holding our breath for, I guess, this weekend. Uh, those, those numbers come out, I guess, tomorrow, uh, AP and the coaches' polls. So we'll be waiting for that. Of course, uh, Gus Free Press will, you know, we, don't, we haven't reported much on the AP top 25 and coaches' poll top 25 football polls the last several years on AFP, but well, actually, if, if there is a ranking, we'll be reporting all that tomorrow. So I'll uh, be looking at AFP for that tomorrow. Uh, in addition to Scott and I getting our heads together, we'll be uh, previewing the UVA-BC game coming up next weekend. Uh, and, of course, tonight, the rest of the night, if you're listening to this podcast, I've still got a lot to crank out in terms of game recap. Uh, we've already got the game recap on the website as we're recording this, but game columns, stats, breakdowns, and that kind of thing still to come. So it's going to be a long night for me in a good way, a good, a good happy long night for, for us here at AFP. For Scott German, I'm Chris Graham signing off. Thank you for listening to Street Knowledge with Chris Graham.